Hey guys, I'll just do a quick overview here showing how to do this procedural growth thing and then show you how to make a dynamic simulation with this with RBD, which is quite simple, but I'll focus on the procedural growth thing. And it's it's very simple. I first got this statue, Einstein's head statue from 3dscans.com. You can just download everything here from free for free. It's pretty neat, pretty nice. And to start, I scatter some points here inside the head. You can start scatter as many as you want, just some as some starting points. So this thing here can grow. And then I convert it to VDB. And it doesn't have to have a really good resolution here. Uh, the key thing is that we have to use this VDB advect here, combine it with a VDB reshape to make it grow. So how does VDB advect work? Uh, everything must be inside the SOP solver. So it here's inside the SOP solver, by the way. So it evaluates all those actions on every frame on top of the last frame. And this VDB advect here needs uh, some data in order for it to know how to be advected. And I create this using a volume. This volume here is, it must be a vector, it's very important, and you must call it vel. I also find out that it works if you change the uniform sampling to by size, otherwise it wasn't working, I'm not sure, but it's working like this. And a volume VOP with a noise. So it will get those values from here, but it must be a VDB. So I just convert it to VDB and use this vector, VDB vector merge. I'm not that sure why, uh, how, how this works, but I'm, I think it just gets the volume values here and put it into the VDB data. And just to have a look inside here, the volume VOP, I'm just using a turbulent noise and a byte export to export it as a vector using the attribute vel. And let's have a look here inside the subsolver now. So on the first input, input I'm using this, this starting point and then I'm connecting it to a VDB advect. The VDB advect needs the noise values, which are coming from here, connected to the second input, but just this by itself will not make it work because it's, uh, it's advecting the, the volume in some direction, but it disappears. Uh, I don't know, maybe because of the low resolution, and we must use a low resolution here because uh, this VDB advect inside the subsolver can get very expensive and it's very slow. So I'm using this AVDB reshape as well. Let me just put it here so you can see how it's working. And now it's advecting and expanding at the same time. So it get this really cool effect, but it doesn't have limits. So it just like growing forever on any direction, on all the directions. And that's why I'm using this VDB combine. And as you can see, it starts getting the, the head shape. I'm not sure if it's very necessary, but I prefer to keep the VDB reshape here to make it expand uh, after it gets the head shape. I don't know, this way it doesn't like waste time calculating things around the head. And depending on your settings here inside of the volume VOP, it will not fill the head properly. As you can see, it's going here, it's happening here. So I'm also adding a VDB reshape here outside the subsolver. So it's expanding uh, on every frame. And for the sake of proceduralism, I'm not animating it using keyframes, I just used this expression at time and multiplied it by 2.5, in this case, look it good. And as you can see, it's just like increasing the value over time. And without this, you can see it's looking, it's not looking that nice. 
and then it expands and I use another VDB combine here with the STF intersection option, uh, the same option I'm using here on this VDB reshape, uh, this VDB combine here. By the way, this VDB combine is getting something from the input tree and the input tree it's just another VDB from polygons with a not very high resolution. And this video from polygons is connected here to the volume just to make it some boundaries. So it creates thing, uh, this information around the, with the head size. And then I just use the video shape and convert, uh, video combine and convert it to polygons. Uh, but something else that you have to note that is that this VDB from polygons here, it does have a good resolution. And then when I use this VDB combine, it's getting the resample for uh, B to match A. This way it just gets the better, better resolution without any costs here inside the sub solver. And then I just have to convert it back to polygons using a VDB convert and it gets perfect but now if you have a look we don't really have a lot of details here in the inside so to put some details there i just uh, got this full head here converted to polygons and added an attribute here i call this attribute out and then i'm transferring this attribute to the growing head and as you can see here, when you visualize, you, you, we can see this. It's called out attribute. And I'm using this smooth just to smooth the out attribute so it doesn't get like with these jagged edges. It's just getting the out, the out attribute from here and transferring from here. It's pretty simple. And then I add a noise here just on the interior. It's uh, it's not looking that good here. It's have some artifacts, so I'm blurring this, only the inside area, and let's have a look inside of this noise here. I'm using a turbulent noise connected to the P position and the displacement, so it displaces these things along the normals of the object. But using the out attribute, it would apply to the outer surface and not the inside surface. So I'm using this fit range to remap it from 0 to 1 to 1 to 0. Now the one attribute is here inside the mesh, not outside. The outside is 0. And then I'm connecting it to the scale of the displacement. So it just scale this part and not this part. And I'm taking like this parameter and exporting it back as a in. So because now we have this in uh, attribute here inside the mesh. And then I'm using this inside attribute here with a uh, attribute blur to smooth only the inside areas. It's this attribute blur is just like the smooth attribute, a uh, smooth sop, but it uh, blurs out only the areas you have some uh, some 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 weight. In this case, it's the in area. So as you can see here, let's check here in the visualize and let's put the in. So it's, it's moving only this area, which is pretty nice. And with this in and the out attribute, we can use it to put a different material here inside and also some like bumpness and stuff to give it even more details. And then I'm caching this out so it gets like doesn't get and then I'm just adding a time blend here holding the last frame the 99 frame in fact I cached it a little bit more than 99 but as you can see if when when the cache is gone it just disappear with this error so I just add this time blend to hold this frame from from 99 it will just be freeze it and then I just added this RBD hero object to the statue and it will make the statue fall and be like really with these dynamics. The only thing that I changed here inside the AutoDop network in the RBD object, uh, let's let me just console it, is use the forming geometry. Otherwise, it will like calculate as a static geometry forever with just this tiny little dot. 
And inside the reach the body solver, I just switch it off the sleeping time, just make it zero. This way, the, sometimes the statue can freeze when it's moving a bit slowly and it wasn't looking good. And yeah, and I think that's it. So yeah, that's it. Just let me know if you have any doubt because I'm not sure if I was that clear. But yeah, I think I think it's not a very complex setup and the SIN file is available on this link description. So just download it and play it with your own ideas. Alright, that's it and thanks for watching.